Hello everybody, thank you so much for stopping by. I am Chit Chad and welcome to another episode of Thursday Art Day. Now there's a lot of franchises that we latch on to, especially when we're kids. They can be movies, television series, cartoons, books, but one franchise stands out to me amongst all the rest, and that is Star Wars. Star Wars has always been a huge part of my life, ever since I was four, maybe five years old, starting with the movies, going on to many of the books, the comics, and even some of the weirder stuff, like the Ewoks animated series. That was a thing. Now there are a lot of characters in the Star Wars universe, many of which I love, even some of them that aren't canon anymore. Rest in peace, Dash Rendar. <laughs> But for today's video, I thought it would be extra fun to draw probably one of the most popular characters from the Star Wars universe, and that is the Mando himself, Boba Fett, whose only real contribution was just standing there and looking cool. But still, Boba Fett's awesome, and he's fun to draw, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, I'll give you one guess as to the first step in this process. That's right, we're going to be sketching Boba Fett out on paper first, which... I got a lot of nice feedback in regards to starting off traditionally before we move into the digital part of things, which I'm really glad because I I like drawing traditionally. Um, it's something I want to definitely improve on because I did lean a bit heavy on digital drawing and digital painting for a while and uh, kind of let my skill set fall a bit to the wayside when it comes to just drawing on paper. In fact, uh, being left-handed, I tend to be very heavy-handed. And that was something that I wanted to work on, um, especially when I was in the Art Institute. Um, I noticed that a lot of my line work was so heavy that it was really difficult to erase, especially when I was using those blue animation pencils, which if you've never used those before, uh, you can go overboard with them pretty quickly, and they're really tough to erase at times. So I'll, I ran into the problem a couple of times where I had to erase and erase to the point where the paper would rip. And I don't know if anyone else, any artists or animators have ever had that happen, but I, I cannot tell you how frustrating it is when that happens. I would rather smear my artwork, which being left-handed, I smear things all the time, pencil and pen. Uh, I'd rather smear it than I would tear a hole in the darn thing. So especially when I was animating late into the night, you know, doing traditional animation and just trying to crank out frame after frame, it can get a little frustrating, and I even had one of those electric erasers, which I, I personally don't care for them because I've never had one that worked as intended. Uh, in fact, I've had those like rip holes in paper more than just me doing it traditionally, if we're going to call erasing traditional. I'm trailing on. Let's talk about Boba Fett. So it took me a while to figure out what I wanted um, both of his arms to do. I knew one was going to hold his gun because it's a really cool gun. In fact, I missed one of the details on it. I think I forgot the stock of it, and we add it later. So if you're like a Boba Fett or Mandalorian aficionado, and you're like counting all the uh, the uh, the missing details, I do apologize. Like uh, this is a bit of a stylized approach, so not everything is going to be present. I did try to get most of his details right, you know, like the tassels and obviously the plates and his his insignia. Um, but I, I'm sure I missed a couple of things, but again, I'm a, I'm a cartoonist, so we're going to keep things stylized and a little bit less, uh, less strict. So the, the one hand was going to be holding the gun and then the other one, I'm like, what do I want the other one to do? Cause I was thinking he has kind of like that grappling hook thing that he used on Luke Skywalker. I'm like, ah, that wouldn't be cool. But I'm like, wait a second, flamethrower, of course. And now I'm thinking to myself, has he ever used the flamethrower? in the original in the original trilogy now i don't know and i don't think he did but i'm pretty certain that jango fett did when he was fighting obi-wan on kamino i'm pretty sure he at least used the flamethrower i know he used his rocket pack but did he use this flame? now i am having all sorts of trouble <laughs> well you know what i'm pretty sure boba fett has a flamethrower because if i remember correctly if i remember correctly in the Bounty Hunter game for the GameCube, which by the way was a fantastic game and I really wish that thing got a sequel, um, I am 
99.0% percent sure that there is a flamethrower in there. You know what? I'm just gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm looking it up because I don't want to be wrong. You know, it's one of those things. Just don't want to be wrong because then I'm gonna be like, oh, I gotta go back and edit this video, and now my Star Wars knowledge is being tested. Let's see here. Does Boba Fett have a... I like how the first thing that popped up on Google was, does Boba Fett have a lightsaber? Does Boba Fett have a son? Does Boba Fett have a daughter? <laughs> All right, let's type in flamethrower. Okay, that was like the eighth result that someone asked for. Flamethrower, Boba Fett, uh-huh. Boba Fett has a flamethrower. Okay, so I wasn't wrong, because he uses it in the Battlefront game. Aha! Yes, because I also remember that there was the Knights of the Old Republic, what was that, an MMO? Where you could play as a bounty hunter class, and they also had a flamethrower. So I was pretty sure that flamethrowers were a thing, and I have been talking about flamethrowers for a very long time. So again, I apologize, but that bounty hunter game was amazing. I loved it. It was so cool. And I know that... Um, LucasArts was working on that kind of uh, Nathan Drake, Uncharted style Star Wars game that supposedly was going to be about young Boba Fett, and that would have been so stinking cool. Why did they have to cancel that? Why? Why? It looked like it was going somewhere so amazing. Oh, so about the drawing, that's also an important topic. So about the drawing, I wasn't happy with the pose. I was looking at it and I'm like, you know what, this isn't a very dynamic pose, he's just kind of standing there. So then I'm like, okay, Boba Fett obviously has a jetpack, so why don't we have him fly? And then I could do something really cool with like the smoke uh, coming out of, or the, the jet stream, whatever you want to call it, the contrail coming out of his jetpack. And then we can have kind of like this dynamic pose of, you know, fire coming out from his flamethrower and then the, the smoke coming out from his jetpack. So it could just be like a really cool, like, pose with environmental effects um, so that's what we ended up doing and it wasn't a big deal to kind of change the pose just because he I already had the pieces in place it was just kind of like manipulating the legs and the arm to kind of be in the right spot so that's something that's really great especially when you're working with vectors because it might be a bit more difficult to do that if you are say doing a doodle um, if you're trying to like make this look like sketch style, which is something I want to try and explore in the future, maybe do some different styles past just the vector thing. But for now, I'm just going to kind of like stick to what I'm comfortable with and then kind of build myself up from there. So hopefully you all don't get too tired of seeing kind of the same concepts over and over again. I do promise that eventually I will start branching out and we'll do a little bit of different things, but um, for this piece and the next episode's piece, they are all pretty similar in the approach. Going back to the drawing, I grabbed an image of Boba Fett online to get his color scheme, which, um, you know, looking at it, I, just everything works really well with this character. I forgot the red sash that is underneath his brown belt. It's a very Assassin's Creed looking sash, and um, I would say that's kind of the only thing that it's, it's, it's weird that it's only like the bottom half. For me, I would almost want to just put it so that it's kind of in the middle, but you know, I didn't design Boba Fett, so I'm not going to change it. So now we're in the process, and I kind of think of this as like Disney-fying things, because um, I think Disney was the first time I saw it done where you take the line work and you make it a deeper color of the fill color. So, so if you look at Boba Fett, he's got this kind of hunter green thing going on um, so we're gonna take it and make it kind of like a deep forest green um, and the same with everything else you know his his uh, his I almost want to call it maroon and then we're just gonna make it a bit deeper um, and then adding all the details and the line work to make sure that you know some of the stray lines are also uh, being used to be that darker uh, fill and I, like I said, I think Disney was the first time I ever saw that done, and I couldn't imagine having to do it frame by frame for animation. Oh boy, that would drive me absolutely crazy, which is why I'm glad to be working in Adobe Animate slash Flash, because it's one of those things where you draw it once, and you can use it forever. <laughs> it's very like the Hanna-Barbera style of animation. It's like, 
You keep using the same thing over and over again and only add new ones if you have to. So the most intricate part of the process of adding new things to this image was adding Boba Fett's jetpack, which I pulled another image online just to get a bit of referencing because I, I kind of had a basic idea of what his jetpack looked like, but I wanted to make sure that I got it a bit more accurate than just me thinking about it in memory because one of the things that I totally just forgot was that his, his jetpack was blue. And there's like no other blue on the, the character design. So I'm like, that was blue? And then I looked at another picture, I'm like, yeah, it was it was blue. Like, Boba Fett's definitely a lot more colorful than his daddy, Django. Uh, Django Fett was just like, what? He was just silver blue with a bit of purple, if I'm remembering correctly, and that's about it. I mean, Boba Fett's got, like, he's, he's got a very unique color scheme. And then this is when I realized, oh yeah, I messed up the gun. So there was quite a few things. I'm like, gosh darn it. I did not get Boba Fett right in in memory. So uh, maybe next time if I do a more complicated character, I should just pull up some, uh, some references to start. I, I just, for me, I've drawn Boba Fett before. So I'm just like, oh yeah, I can do this from memory. And um, I, my phone was dead at the time. So I was just, I had that plugged in and charging and I'm just like, oh, you know, what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna draw it. Like I've done Boba Fett before. It shouldn't be a big deal. And then as I was drawing, I'm like, something doesn't seem right. Ah, oh, it's probably just me. And then you get to the vectors. You're like, nope, nope. I definitely messed up. I'm gonna have to fix that now. So uh, this is probably the most I have had to go back in and add new things to an image that I've already done before. Um, again, it's not it's not a big deal, especially when you're working in vectors like this. It's just like, okay, just add a new uh, grouping object and draw it and, and you're done. One of the things that I um, purchased recently, which um, I should probably do like a review of on the channel because it's a fantastic little device. I bought this new, Wacom or Wacom whichever way you prefer it anyways I have this really cool tablet that they came out with and I guess I don't even know if you would call it a tablet but it's basically think of it as like a notepad that has a digital backing to it so it has like a, almost like a tablet behind it but you draw on actual paper and it comes with a pen like a, a, a Wacom pen and you use that to draw on the actual paper. And if you have it synced up to either your phone or you know, like an iPad or something, you can um, it translates the data from the pen and and paper to your phone or your iPad in a vector format. It is super slick, and. I got the smaller one um, just because I thought it would be a cool thing to, to have while traveling. Um, and now I'm kind of regretting it. I wish I would have gotten the bigger one because the price difference is not that big. I think it was like 20 bucks extra for the larger one. Um, because uh, I'm one of those people that likes to have a bit more space when drawing. I, I'm, I have a problem with drawing you know small details. Uh, so I wish I would have gotten the bigger one. But you know, besides that point. Uh, it's it's a pretty cool little tool. It has problems keeping up if you're a really fast drawer. Um, so normally I draw things in pencil first and then do the 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 line work in pen. Um, so you get like the rough doodle out of the way, and then you do like the nicer line work with pen, and then it's able to keep up with you uh, a bit quicker. I'm utilizing it for a story animation that I'm trying to put together for the channel, uh, and hopefully I can get that done soon because it's a story that. I don't even think I've shared on the Super Geek Friends, and I've shared a lot of like silly stories on that channel. And sometimes I like repeat myself because I forget what I've said a year ago or two years ago. Wow, it's already been two years. That's crazy. Um, so I'm pretty sure like 99% that I have not shared this story. So I'm like, this would actually make a fun little animation. So I'm utilizing this this tablet for that because I kind of want the the story illustrations to have a bit of more of that like drawn like it's coming from my head type thing. So now we're going to be adding some of the effects including the fire and adding a bit more detail to the smoke. I kind of wanted it to have a stylized approach but also you know obviously look like smoke which I was having a kind of a difficult time moving back and forth between them. Sometimes I was thinking maybe I should apply a texture to this to make it look more puffy like a cloud and then like no maybe I should just you know really separate out the colors and that's the approach I took and I'm happy with the way it turned out. Uh, I think it looks really cool especially when we take a look at the final. Um, at this point I'm just adding the 
the shading, um, a bit more, a bit more blue on the the shading, and a bit more yellow on the highlights, especially because he has the flamethrower. So I wanted to utilize yellow and really make that pop. You know, like make it look like this flamethrower is super, super bright, um, and try to make it look um, a bit distinct from the background which I wanted to use a more subtle color for the background for Boba Fett just because he has so much color going on already you know between the reds and maroons the yellows and the greens and the and the um, you know the, the the beige on him already so I just wanted to go with a, a bit more of a subtle background to let Boba Fett kind of stand out from it more Adding some of the final details like his insignia, his badge on his breastplate, and uh, we are getting down to the final. Adding that noise layer that I always like to do, um, and going in and doing some final adjustments with the vibrancy and the saturation, and that's it. That is our Boba Fett. And that is the final Boba Fett piece. This one was a lot of fun, but probably the most I've ever changed the design from the sketch to final. Still, I really had fun adding all the details from the smoke to the jetpack to giving him a more dynamic pose. If there's something you'd like to see me draw in the future, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you like this content and you want to support the channel, consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. I hope you all are having an amazing day. Go out there and be creative. And as always, I will chat with you later.